And welcome back to another day of devotion. I am Pastor Roy here at Woodlawn Christian Church in Lake City, Iowa, and this devotion is for Tuesday, October 24th of 2023. We are in the book of Ephesians, and yesterday we finished up chapter 3, so that means today we start chapter 4. Um, so we're going to look at the first six verses only in chapter 4. Um, chapter From chapter 3 to chapter 4 marks a change in what's going on. We've been talking about more or less doctrinal issues, what Jesus has accomplished or what God has accomplished through Jesus and what that means for us. Um, and he ended chapter 3 with that wonderful prayer where he's praying for us that we might be able to somehow grasp these things, this mystery of God, what this, this great mystery of what he's done for us, and that we might be able to understand how much God loves us. You know, just the impossible for us to understand that. But Paul's praying for the impossible here. Um, and he says, Now to him who by the power of work within us is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. That's where he left us with that oxology at the end of the prayer there. So now we jump into chapter 4. <clears throat> and it's changed, like I said. Uh, the rest of the book is about what do we do now? Uh, and what do we do for God? And what is expected of us? And all of that. Um, so let's jump into the first six verses. Talk about that a little bit and see what we can come up with and how it applies to us. Excuse me, my throat is dry today. I think I might be com coming down with a little bit of a cold. We'll try to fight that off. Take some extra vitamins today. All right, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 to 6. I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all lowliness and meekness, with patience, forbearing one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of us all, who is above all and through all and in all. Do you notice one there a lot? It wasn't just there one time, was it? So there are a bunch of ones in here. We are to be united. He starts off with, of course, therefore, and the therefore was all of that stuff we've been talking about from the first three chapters. Uh, because of all that, how much God loved us and this great mystery of God that you can't comprehend, but I want you to try to, be, to comprehend. I pray that God might give you a glimpse of it. Therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, for the Lord. Paul talk, calls himself a prisoner a lot. Sometimes he means it literally because he's in jail when he's writing letters. Sometimes he just means that he is he can't get out of this relationship. It's so intense. Um, and that's the way it should be for us as well. And that's kind of what Paul's getting at here. Um, he begs you to lead a life worthy of the calling. And what's your calling? Well, our calling is to do these things that we're going to be talking about for the rest of the book. Um our calling is to love one another, it says. And we're supposed to do it. We're called with all lowliness and meekness, with patience, forbearing one another in love. We're called to do that. We're called to be united. That's what we're called to be. We're called to have unity together. We're supposed to be this one body of Christ. And we're going to talk about that. I believe that we'll get into that tomorrow, I believe, right? Um, yep, tomorrow. We'll talk about that tomorrow, or maybe the next. Who knows? Sometimes I break things up more. But at any rate, I digress. We are here called to be united. We're one body in Christ. Um, and, of course, the sad reality is we're not unified. We call ourselves Christians, and we've got all these different denominations. Um, I mean, we've got Orthodox and Catholic and Protestant for the major divisions. And then you break down, there's more than one kind of Orthodox. There's more than one kind of Catholic, which may, may surprise you. And there's so many different kinds of Protestants. And some of us are quite crazy, to be blunt. Um, and some of us have, have, have gotten to the point where we're really not doing God's work. We're not listening to the scriptures at all. We're, we're, we're wanting to, to create something. And I, and I do go on about this a great deal, especially in the mainline Protestant movement within which I am preaching and teaching. Um, and we do tend to point fingers at are the ones that are the most close to us. Jesus did that too. I believe he was a Pharisee. So there we go. We're working in the right, we're working, um, in the right model, let's say. But the model is supposed to be we're united. We're supposed to be united in Christ. We're not supposed to be arguing about some of these unessential things. And we're supposed to agree on the essential things. We're supposed to stick to what God taught, what Jesus taught. 
on the essential things, what Paul taught that Jesus told him. And we just don't do it. Um, we just don't do it. We, we, we end up being fractured because of that. Um, and we, we need to be less divisive. We need to be more tuned to the scripture. We need to be more faithful to the scripture. We need to, we need to really answer to this calling that Paul is talking about. We need a life worthy of the calling. All right. That's where I'm going to leave you at for today. Try to keep this one short and sweet. Um, we'll pick up at verse 7. I'm not sure if we'll go all the way to 16 tomorrow or not. We'll see. Like I said, I changed my mind. I was going to go all the way to 16 today, and I didn't do that, did I? So have a blessed day, and please, please, please be a blessing to someone today. I think the best way to do that would be to show them how much God loves them and that he sent Jesus into this world uh, to pay the bill for us, as we say. He has redeemed us, literally paid for us in blood. So if you enjoy these devotions, please do like and subscribe. Make a kind comment if you would be so kind. And uh, if you'd like to share them, hey, we'd love to see you share them. But we'd most of all like to have you back, whether you subscribe or whatever. Just come back and see us again. Take care. God bless. God loves you. See you later.